I remember uh, like most of the time I'm always asked to come to the front and uh, help with bagging, which you're just stuck in one place. And I, I have no patience of like working in one place. But regardless, um, there's someone I would bag for a customer. Like they would have a lot more items than usual. And they said, uh, cause I normally ask them if they want them in bags. And they said, can you put all that in one? Excuse me, what? And the cashier who I was working with, like she understood my feelings. I'm like, Sir, which ones do you want in the bag, and which ones do you not want in the bag? Oh. <laughs> oh my god, it's so You can't fit everything in one bag! Yeah, I know. Or What's more annoying is when those customers come in and they bring their own bag, so now I have to spend the effort to unload or um, unwad and open up those bags when I have a rack of bags that are, all, like, pre-opened up. Like, it's there conveniently. But then I had to change it. And the reason why they do this is because in California, maybe it was tr like a thing across the U.S., but in California at least, you, you're charged like 10 cents per bag, and they don't want to spend an extra dime. Yeah, I, I pretty much have heard about that, because my family sometimes brings their own bags. But unlike, but unlike um, certain customers, they actually bag their own shit. Yeah, some of them, like, they offer, like, they say, like, oh, I can bag this one myself. Like, okay. And then I just let them do their own thing. Yeah. Um, normally, I don't mind it when they call me up to do a carryout or to help with uh, taking stuff out. But this one time, I legitimately just was so annoyed because this lady was like, hey, I need you to... Uh, they called me up going, hey, we need you to do a carryout for this lady. First, first off, this lady literally left the line to buy more shit, which oh. just really annoyed me, especially because the fact that That's she had rude. two cards. Yeah, she had two carts, by the way, and she put them in the middle of the road, so customers had to literally try to, um... Circumvent. Wait for me. To, yeah, to circumvent around it. And then, two, the minute we were done, I figured, okay, I'm just gonna get, help her unload these things in, a, in, um, in her car, and I'm just gonna go back and try to finish my department. Not, that is not what happened, because as soon as I went out, she literally started telling me that she had to call an Uber to help her with her groceries. Oh my god! And to make it worse, the fucking Uber wasn't even there yet. Uh. So I was standing there with this lady waiting until eventually my co-workers had to call me up and tell and, to and just had me tell her, I can't wait for, for your Uber. I have to go back to my work. <sighs> it was so annoying. And to make it worse, I think like maybe an hour later... After I, w I was finished with my shift and was going home, she still was outside! Oh my god, dude. How stupid do you have to be? Like, okay, if you're gonna call an Uber for groceries, fine. But don't wait for the sake for that one Uber if they're not gonna show up. That is so stupid. I did feel sorry for her, but it's like, lady, you just made my job more difficult. Thanks. Yeah, really. And today wasn't even fun. Well, today was actually surprisingly easy, but it did not start off well. Woke uh. up. I woke up. And I was shut. Well, actually, I didn't wake <laughs> up. My dad woke me up because, as it turns out, my stupid alarm didn't sound. So uh. I inst instead of waking up at 4, I woke up at 4.57. And I should have been at work, like, maybe in two minutes. Jesus. That didn't happen. Uh. Yeah. I, it, I had to instead come, I pretty much instead came in at 5.10 because I had to get ready, I had to get my coffee, I pretty much skipped breakfast, and instead ate a granola bar my dad gave. And to make it worse, my co-worker was like, okay, so I won't be able to help you because I'm going to be at the front with the manager, because she's also a key. So it was just me and my other new co-worker, Andy, who was handling the wet rack. So I was busting my ass off trying to quickly fill up the departments while also being late and then she also tells me two whammies one the loads coming in early and two are all the ma the big head managers of the district are coming in to pretty much check out the store oh shit dude it was like god damn it and to make it worse the people of the managers came in early oh crap. the only merciful the only merciful thing is that the department at least was presentable at that point keyword attempted to look presentable mm -hmm. and the load thankfully enough was changed from arriving early to just coming in late as usual 
Which is kind of a good thing, considering the entire back, we still had, like, maybe 22 bananas. And we had 15 coming in, so that's not fun. That's fun, having too much bananas in the back. <sighs> Retail is fun. At this point, like, because I remember, like, I was having a conversation and Solar was in a call. It's like, what is the worst kind of job? And Solar, without hesitation, said, uh, anything involving customer service. Yeah, it, definitely. <laughs> and the sad thing is, everything has customer service. Even the one job you don't think it doesn't have customer service still has it. The thing that sucks the most about all of this is that you have to keep a smile. You have to keep on a face while dealing with their attitude. You have to be very, you have to at best be respectful and presentable even when they're in the wrong. <sighs> I still am a firm believer that, you know, the whole thing of the customers always being right, no they're not. The no, customer they're not. Pays. No, the customer just pays and that's it. And if they're wrong, they're wrong. Yeah. Another goddamn kinstone. Jesus Christ. Lord, how many do you have? Yes. <laughs> God, kill the minions. God, these things predicted the minions. Veil vale Falls, the Minish Woods, and Lake Kalea. All right. Fuck. If I had to describe retail, it's like that Smith song, Heaven Knows I'm Miserable, because it has a line that literally says, I was wor I was looking for a job, then I found a job, and Heaven Knows I'm Miserable now. That's literally in retail in a nutshell. More Kingstones. Yeah. Ow! Who the fuck hit me? Can't you climb that? Uh, I was about to try before I got hit. Okay. What's the point of that being there? I'm guessing you have to be like Tiny Link to climb up there. Probably, but goddamn. So right now, Riley's at work. I don't know what's going on with Jesse. I don't know if she's on yet. I'm going to check and see. I haven't no. checked on her if she's doing well. Yeah. Just taking a look right now. Okay, so she's offline. Mm. One of my favorite stories to tell when it comes to customer service is um, it was my turn to uh, manage the uh, parking lot and clear out of um, any carts that are like sitting out. And I always uh -huh. had to put them inside the car corral at the front. I had a long load and somebody decided to park their bike inside there. And I literally told that person, excuse me, sir, you can't park your bike in there. So he moved it. And like, I didn't notice it at first until I was up closer. And he's like, he's getting in my face. And I kid you not, he's like dropping the F word on me and everything, saying that I ruined his mood. Like, what the fuck's your problem, dude? Like, Jesus, it's not that big of a deal if you can't park your bike in a car corral. You know, a place where people go to get fucking carts? You didn't think about that? No. I didn't say that to him. I just let him get all in my face. Yeah. Uh, I tend to feel, I tend to understand that. I think... I think with me, my favorite um, story, even though it's kind of a, just stupid in a nutshell, was when my coworker called me up to help out a customer. I thought I was just going to help her out, get some items um, from the top shelf or anything like that. No, basically, I had to help this lady with her grocery shopping. For an hour. It, it would have been completely um, hilarious if it wasn't the fact that she was forgetful. What a Dick face! Get down here, you fucking cheap ass! Get your ass down here! Oh! 
Alright, fine. Fuck you. What a dick weasel. Fuck you very, very much. Alright. The Cory Sword from the uh, Minish Smith. Oh, yeah, um. Let's see. I'm guessing it's uh, the, sm uh, the smithy who I lived with before I had to... Wait, what's in here? Um, maybe I should check later. No, 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 no. Hyrule Town. South Hyrule Field. Okay, so I had to really head south. <clears throat> God, like... That's just a simple rule of thumb. You don't park your bike inside a car corral. Uh, no! So, <laughs> yeah, no, somebody actually shared a funny story. Um, I think it was Ryza who shared me this. Um, he stated that somebody, and I kid you not, like, somebody parked their Mini Cooper and started the card corral. And I'm like, how did you even get it to fit in there? But upon that, like, he just continued his job. He didn't even bother to, like, try to find whoever the driver was. And as he was walking out, apparently he was getting caved in by a bunch of other cards. <laughs> I mean, that's just straight up karma. Is karma. Who the fuck puts something in a cart corral? I mean, if you're gonna put, if you're gonna park your bike around in, you know, you're mm -hmm. gonna tie your bike around the the uh, but the uh, cart corral. Put it to the sides or on the very top edge. That's what some customers do that I've seen do. You, or heck, they come in with their bike and leave it um in the front. Ah, get off of me. With permission, at least. But you know what I mean. You're really like where you're supposed to park your bike is in the um. There's like a few little like ground rails, and you will like leash it together and you lock it. That's where yeah, you're supposed to park it, but they don't follow the rules. Well, obviously not. With our place, we don't have that, sadly. So that's why some customers will either just come with their bikes and put them in the front, or just simply tie them up around the the, uh, the cart corral. Especially okay. since they. Okay, so Ryza has just um, uh, updated me. I was the one who parked the carts around the car. Good. <laughs> Good choice. But you're looking so much stronger. If you get tired, just go ahead and take a nap upstairs in your room. I'm busy making swords for the guards that keep the monsters at bay. I wish I could do more, but for now, we need you to save Princess Zelda. Like every Zelda game. Yeah. <sighs> Alright. Let me... Let's see if I can go back to the Minish Woods. Let's is just... go to... Let's go to, to. Let's go to Pilot Town. Fuck off, minion clones! I really, fuck off! You were good in the first move, but now you just got annoying. I always found them annoying. Period. I didn't mind them that much. I know people hated the minions when they started to become popular, but I don't know. I just never really hated them. But I do agree that. Yeah, Illumination kind of really obsessed with pushing them out like their mascots. You know, consider that Nintendo is involved for that Super Mario movie. <laughs> Don't you think that this is a little too much of a foreshadow here? Oh god, please! I mean, probably. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh god, please. Actually, no, probably. Oh. I just hope they don't shove in any minion-like personalities in the Mario game. Just have it be a typical Mario adventure. Okay, that didn't do shit. Ow. You're probably gonna have to be Tiny Link for that. Maybe? I don't know. You fuck off. Alright. <clears throat> I didn't know if there was a smithy in um, Minish, um, Minish World. There we go. 
Still can't get over the fact that Chris Pratt was casted to voice Mario instead of, you know, Charles Martinet. I, on one hand, I, I don't want to be negative because Chris Pratt is a good actor, but it really depends on how well he executes the If he is able to pull off Mario really well, then I'll be perfectly fine with him being playing the role of Mario. I would still like Charles Martinet to do it, but... I'll give Chris a pass, but if he just simply uses his deadpan voice for the role, I'm gonna be I'm, I'm not gonna be happy. Here we go. Let's it go. Yahoo! Yahoo! Because that's not Mario. <laughs> Mario is energetic, hyperactive, and despite the fact that he's very chubby, he's very athletic. We do not want to just imagine him being Star um, Star Lord again. Even if Mario did go to space. Twice. <laughs> You're from Earth? No, I'm from Missouri. Yeah, that's an Earth dipshit. <laughs> <laughs> I still love that line. I will admit, it is kind of amusing that even though he wasn't cast for Mario for the Mario movie, ironic, the fact that Charles Matinee is going to be in a fucking Dragon Ball film is just hilarious. Pratt is a better actor than Chris Evans. <laughs> Speaking of stars, I love the fact that the new Lightyear movie is getting good, although I am seeing some people say, this is just Star Wars, but with Buzz Lightyear. I mean, wasn't that what the idea was going for? I mean, it's a science fiction uh, space adventure. Exactly. But I guess some people are still bitter over the fact that this is not... Why is this a thing? Isn't this... Why is people saying that this is the movie that Andy saw and all shit? It's, again, who cares? It's an out-of-continuity... It's a, not only just a movie. It's an out-of-continuity movie. Regardless of Pixar saying, hey, this is the movie Andy saw. Who cares? It's still an out-of-continuity adventure about a toy within the, within the Pixar universe. I'm still going to see it. I still have yet to check it out. I hear that it's not doing very well at the box office. Oh, no. Are there, other, are there, any, are there any other movies that are kicking its ass? Or is it Top just Gun. not? That explains it. Top Gun's kicking its ass. Yeah. I mean, I... I mean, I shouldn't be surprised. Top Gun is a very good movie. I haven't seen it, but I know that you loved it. I know that Riley loved it. Oh, Riley saw Top Gun finally? I, if I remember correctly, I think he did. I know that Solar finally saw it. I know he probably loves it. Oh, he loved it. <clears throat> okay, I've been just aimlessly wandering for too fucking long. I've been streaming for, like, over an hour. Mm. All right. Gotta be something. Yeah. I mean, the only other person who could probably help you at the moment is either Riley or Jesse, because I know Jesse's played the game. All right. Well, they're currently off uh, line. Mm. So, shit. Any ideas of um, what I could do for, let's say, I get um, a fifty dollar donation? Uh. Tough one. Yeah, because I'm currently overdrawn. I'm trying to think of what you can do for a $50 donation. Oh, god damn it! Give me bombs! Hello. We're doing cutting edge research on pickup blooms here. You see that plant with the little bud? We're looking on ways to improve it. Danny, it's going to be my birthday tomorrow. Okay, I'm going to have to look up a strategy. <laughs> 